United States Navy is at risk. Right now, this very minute. Wave after wave of unwanted intrusions capable of striking anywhere on the planet, including right here at home. The probes are invisible, but they could potentially cripple our forces with as much devastation as any bomb or missile. This is all occurring in cyberspace, the worldwide domain where communications, intelligence gathering, kinetic operations, logistics, and command and control can be threatened at network speed. But the U.S. Navy stands ready to repel this threat and to maintain superiority in this new operational domain. The cyber warriors of U.S. Fleet Cyber Command and U.S. 10th Fleet help operate and assure the security of Navy networks around the world, providing powerful cyber capabilities necessary for warfighting superiority across the full spectrum of military operations. Any entity with access to the Internet can operate in cyberspace, including criminals, terrorists, hacktivists, and nations large and small. As vast as the Internet has become, cyberspace is even larger, with virtually all commerce and communications passing through electronic networks. From GPS systems to wireless phones, credit card scanners to automatic climate control systems, and the U.S. power grid, all are vulnerable to cyber attack. And so is our military. Each day, the Department of Defense alone receives six million probes. The traditional operational domains of maritime, land, air, and space have definite boundaries that separate one from the other. But a fifth operational domain, cyberspace, crosses all domains. Cyberspace is where the battles of the future will be won or lost. Tenth Fleet is no stranger to unconventional missions. In World War II, submarines were the new menace, changing the very conventions of naval combat. Tenth Fleet was formed to counter that threat, unifying intelligence and operations in one command for the first time. Today's Tenth Fleet continues that tradition. The Chief of Naval Operations established U.S. Fleet Cyber Command and recommissioned U.S. Tenth Fleet as the Navy's central operational authority for cyber, electronic warfare, networks, cryptology, signals intelligence, and information operations. This represents a landmark trend. The United States Navy is at risk. Right now, this very minute. Wave after wave of unwanted intrusions capable of striking anywhere on the planet, including right here at home. The probes are invisible, but they could potentially cripple our forces with as much devastation as any bomb or missile. This is all occurring in cyberspace, the worldwide domain where communications, intelligence gathering, kinetic operations, logistics, and command and control can be threatened at network speed. But the U.S. Navy stands ready to repel this threat and to maintain superiority in this new operational domain. The cyber warriors of U.S. Fleet Cyber Command and U.S. 10th Fleet help operate and assure the security of Navy networks around the world, providing powerful cyber capabilities necessary for warfighting superiority across the full spectrum of military operations. Any entity with access to the Internet can operate in cyberspace, including criminals, terrorists, hacktivists, and nations large and small. As vast as the Internet has become, cyberspace is even larger, with virtually all commerce and communications passing through electronic networks. From GPS systems to wireless phones, credit card scanners to automatic climate control systems, and the U.S. power grid, all are vulnerable to cyber attack. And so is our military. Each day, the Department of Defense alone receives six million probes. The traditional operational domains of maritime, land, air, and space have definite boundaries that separate one from the other. 
but a fifth operational domain. Cyberspace crosses all domains. Cyberspace is where the battles of the future will be won or lost. Tenth Fleet is no stranger to unconventional missions. In World War II, submarines were the new menace, changing the very conventions of naval combat. Tenth Fleet was formed to counter that threat, unifying intelligence and operations in one command for the first time. Today's Tenth Fleet continues that tradition. The Chief of Naval Operations... actually out here uh, performing flight tests for the F-35C to open up the flight envelope and see what we can learn to get the F-35 ready for carrier evolution launch and recovery. The difficulties of maintaining this aircraft on Nimitz is that, one, it's the first time we've ever brought this type of aircraft aboard. With the training that we go through, uh, we have to go very slow to ensure that every step, it, every step is done safely. Uh, the sailors on the Nimitz were prepared that we had a small contingent come out to us in Pax River, Maryland, and we provided a small cadre course for the individuals to learn about the F-35, uh, taxi and towing, learning all the intricacies of the F-35 that no others would see unless they were inside the program. Every moment being on the deck, working on the aircraft, uh, being around, working with the crew, bringing the aircraft up and down on the elevators. I think every day is a new, new challenge, new excitement, and we learn something new every single day, every time we move the aircraft. Every moment we're learning something new about the aircraft and how it interacts with the flight deck crew and the aircraft carrier itself. So it's pretty tough to learn on the fly, but that's what we're doing out there. That's what we've trained for on back at Pax River for the past five years for the aircraft. Yeah, I know everybody had the same feeling for the aircraft when it, it came in, it touched, it trapped. And then the next day when it launched off, it was still wonderful. Not every day you get to make history, and we made history with the F-35C for the Navy as a whole. 